Howdy friends, welcome back to the Happy Homestead. I'm Amanda and as you can probably see, I am here at our homestead property today. I'm gonna do some last minute harvesting from the summer vegetables with peppers and tomatoes, uh, maybe some eggplant. But I also want to show you the winter squash. So the purpose of today's video is to really show you, number one, how do you know when it's the right time to harvest your winter squash? And then once we get back home and in the kitchen, I'll show you the best way to make sure it lasts for many months throughout the winter so that when you're ready to use it, you have it there. Before we head to the garden, I want to show you what I found last time I was here and I was so excited. Do you see these flowers? Do you know what they are? And look at this. This is passion fruit. Passion fruit flowers and passion fruit are growing wildly right here on our property and I'm so excited. So I'm gonna let this one get a little bit more ripe and there's some more baby ones growing in there. And uh, oh, here's another one. Just saw that one. I'm excited. We'll see uh, see how those go. You know how every year in the garden there's something that just flourishes and does amazing, right? Last year it was my loofah and my Rampiante zucchini. This year, it is nothing even remotely winter squash related. <laughs> I'm not having the best squash year. Um, I'd probably have to say tomatoes is maybe my year. I've had a really good tomato harvest despite the insane weeds that I haven't kept up with. But I've got two, I think it's tromboncino squash here that are growing. It's actually more like two and a half because I've got one here that has uh, kind of petered out here towards the bottom. I'm going to harvest this. Now, it is not gonna work for storing, right? I'll just cut that off. But what I can do is when I get home is cut off like the bottom inch and use this for fresh cooking today or tomorrow. But I have two gorgeous squash here. This one is probably close to two and a half feet long and it is ready. And how you know it's ready is it's pretty full grown. It's pretty firm and almost hard to the touch. And then up at the top, the stem is also really firm. So when you are cutting your squash off, you want to leave as much of that top stem in place. Um, but overall, this looks really good. Um, so we're gonna take this home and then I'll show you how we'll keep this preserved for the whole pantry. I have one more here that is ready. Doesn't look as big or as wonderful, but Still worth bringing home. So that's all the winter squash I have to harvest today. The plants still have more time to bear some fruit and I do see some small female flowers with some fruits that will open up. So we're gonna let these go. I'm gonna harvest what I can left from the tomatoes and peppers and then we'll head home and I'll show you how to take care of that squash. If you ever want to try to grow as an experiment vegetables in a literal weed forest you may just get the amount of success I've gotten I am amazed so we got a lot of green tomatoes definitely the last tomato harvest of the year a little sad but it's been a great year 
and um, probably the second to last pepper harvest of the year. I do have three or four more eggplant growing. I think I got one today and I got four more growing and maybe a couple more peppers in another week or two, but a summer garden is winding down and eventually we're just gonna move the fencing and mow this all down. <laughs> but I do have sweet potatoes in here, so we're not mowing it down until it's time to harvest those. So we'll mow and then we'll, we'll harvest our sweet potatoes. So that's it for today. I'm gonna head home and I'll see you just a second in the kitchen. We're back in the kitchen. I've got all my squash here on the counter. Let me show you what we have, what to look for, and how to make it last as long as possible. So we've got Trombancino. Um, these are the two that you saw me harvest in the garden um, just seconds ago. And these are two that I harvested probably about two months ago. So you can kind of see the difference in the color variation. Over time, they will get a little bit more um, tannish, orangish color, and certainly harder. Um, we've got some butternuts, different crookneck. I've got a delicata here. I think this is like a honey, honey butternut. Um, these are, I think these are called Zappolito. These are seeds that I got at Baker Creek. And this is my first year growing these and I only got two, but um, I'm really excited about them. So you can harvest them and eat them right away as like a summer squash, or you can let them cure and eat them as a winter squash. And then we've got two spaghetti squashes. So a couple of things, right? When you are storing your squash, you need to make sure that it is in a cool, dark place with no access to moisture. So you don't wanna put it anywhere where there's a lot of humidity. Um, and you really wanna make sure that you have good, hard, kind of tough skins. So if I put my fingernail in here, I'm not making any indentations, right? This is a perfectly cured squash. I don't see anything around the stem on either side, right where the bloom was or the stem was. Nothing looks like it's molding or getting soft. Same thing with the spaghetti squash here. You always make sure it's true that when you're cutting your squash, you really do leave a good stem um, to kind of cure and harden off well as well because a lot of the bacteria and the rotting is going to happen here around the stem. And so as long as you have a really good um, base, I should say here, you'll help avoid all of that. So everything again, looks good. No indentations with my fingernail. So this is one of the trombancino that we harvested um, moments ago. And you can kind of see, it's first of all, it's got these spots on it. Um, these certainly developed over the couple of days that I've had it here in the house. It's also <laughs> not very firm, right? It's very flexible, very pliable. I can even feel, and you can possibly see up here that it looks a little wrinkly. Do you see how it looks a little wrinkly here, right? You can start to tell that it's starting to go bad. So this one is not gonna be kept for curing. This one is gonna be set aside and used for fresh eating. Now, while we're looking at the trombancino, this is one of them that I harvested a couple of months ago. You see how it's starting to wrinkle up top there. So it's a little soft, right, compared to maybe down here. So this is another one, and, and this is probably why I wanna show you. So this one broke off. The stem broke off, I think, when I was harvesting this, but that is why we're starting to see this wrinkling here on this one, because there's some sort of bacteria or maybe even mold that is starting to degrade the quality of the squash. Now, don't get alarmed. This is still usable. You can still eat it, enjoy it, and uh, reap the rewards of this harvest. You just can't cure this and keep this for months. It's already starting to go down. So this one is also one that'll be get eaten soon. Now, going back to the other trombancino from a few months ago, this one is very firm, no issues. You see how we have a perfectly beautiful stem here. Um, I don't see any bacteria around it, nothing's there, right? So we have some of these spots again, but again, I don't see any problems or feel any problems with this one. And I'm showing you this, guys, so that you can really understand the difference. Same thing when you're looking at any other type of winter squash. Now this one, 
doesn't have a stem comparatively to this one, right? So I just have to really kind of keep an eye on them and make sure that everything still feels really firm and it's not getting soft or mushy. But one of the ways to help these last as long as possible once they're properly cured is apple cider vinegar. This is a gallon of organic apple cider vinegar with the mother that I purchased from Azure Standard, as you can probably see that. Um, it's an excellent use to help keep the bacteria at bay. So what we're gonna do, and I do this about once every six weeks or so, maybe four to six weeks, just whenever I think about it, I will take a cloth and put some apple cider vinegar in a bowl, dip my cloth in, and you're gonna see me do this in a sec, and I literally just kind of wipe the apple cider vinegar all around the squash. It's like kind of giving it an apple cider vinegar bath, but especially around the stem. So depending on how much squash you have, you know, this might take anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes of your time, but it is absolutely worth it to keep your squash harvest as long as possible throughout the winter months. Okay, so I just put some in a bowl here. I'm taking a clean rag. I'm just gonna dip it in and start to wash my squash. Now you're not drenching it, right? So I might have too much here, but I'm just gonna spread it around and get it really well on the bloom end. Any imperfections that are on the squash, I certainly get that and then again around that base of the stem. And then I'm just gonna leave it here on the counter behind me to dry. And I'm going to do this process with all of my squash. Now, this doesn't make your squash last forever, but it will help keep it throughout your winter months. Now, ideally, I will go through all of this winter squash within the next, I would say, four to five months. If I can keep it lasting in the next four to five months, I'll be happy. But you especially wanna do this when you have that stem broken off, because again, that is where the bacteria are gonna get in. That's kinda of like their open door. And so you really wanna keep your squash cleaned up and dry. This is my first year really growing the trombancino. And so I think they're supposed to be pretty prolific, but you know, as you heard me mention earlier, this is just not my year for squash. So I only have these four, um, and I'm hopeful three will, nope, two, because I think two I have to eat pretty quick. So two I hopefully will last us through the winter. Um, but definitely gonna try these next year. You just have to be careful when you're working with the trombancino or any squash with a really long neck because it is easy to accidentally, especially if you drop it, snap that neck off, which then it is no longer good for long-term storage. <laughs> it would need to be eaten pretty quick. So all the squash have been rubbed down with the apple cider vinegar. Some of them still have, you know, a little moisture on the skin. I'm just gonna leave them here on the counter to fully dry out for an hour or two, and then I'll store them back in my pantry and uh, do this again in about four to six weeks. So just kind of gauge it, right? Every time I go in my pantry, I'll just kind of check a couple, make sure they're still feeling good, make sure they're still looking good. Because the last thing you want is for one of these to rot without you knowing, and then you walk in and it, you have to deal with the mess and the stench. You don't want that. So kind of keep an eye on them, keep checking, and then just keep rubbing down with that apple cider vinegar, and you should have no issues with these lasting as long as possible. I'm really looking forward to using these a lot this fall in some of those heartier, comforting meals, and especially for Thanksgiving, um, I really like to do uh, a butternut pie rather than a pumpkin pie. So I'm hoping a lot of these can work for some butternut pie also. I wanted to mention, I know not everybody is able to grow a lot of their own food. 
and for this episode squash. So this practice is still extremely important and viable for any type of squash you get from friends, farmers markets, or even the grocery stores, right? The bacteria is not picky about where the fruit or the vegetable came from to start inhabiting it. So go ahead and use this practice for any type of winter squash that you try to store over multiple months, no matter where you've purchased it. Thanks for joining me today. Hope this was helpful. Stay healthy, stay well. Bye-bye.